This is a debate between Jadon and Bikubina. Jadon defending the position that we are not intelligently designed by any creator and Bill defending the proposition that we are designed by an intelligent being there is a mind between the creation of every living organism. But Bill is actually not a creationist, he's just an intelligent design advocate. He's not advocating for the Garden of Eden story, but he's telling us there is actually a mind between every single living organism living. So, please, I want to first apologize for the sound. For the first 50, 50 or 47 minutes, the sound has an echo. So, I would advise you to pick on a, a, an earphone or an, or an earpiece or, and reduce the, the volume. For the first 53 minutes, I think. For the first 53 minutes. I think this is due to the error in connection because Bill is from Ghana. Bill is Ghanaian and <laughs> it's actually it's funny somehow, but you enjoy his talks. Uh, and, and that is actually, I was streaming with OBS, but there was actually a problem. So I, I don't know how the problem, problem developed, but, but it will be fixed in around 50, 53rd minute. First few thirty minutes. Like most Nigerians, I never heard about pulsars, squeezers, event horizons, black holes, and quantum mechanics. Mechanics, or have a detailed understanding of evolution by natural selection that even an average Nigerian guy do not even understand. And you know, till I was old enough to afford books that opened my heart eyes to the wonders all imagined. If you're listening to this as an agnostic or an atheist who got out of religion like me, you would understand. Leaving the fundamentalist idea and the and the idea that left to stranded in religion is the best thing that happened to you. And just think about the millions of beauties and minds that never got the chance to express itself. And I'm very sure you're enjoying the spark of your life right now, at least leaving the word fundamental ideas of, of religion behind. Just think about the lives we stayed away, believing the God of Europe or, or the Middle East is the the salvation of Africans, you know, of Africans. Af- Africa is falling behind in innovation and invention, all the advancement in science, because knowledge and, and the spark that lights the flame of curiosity is hidden from us. Coming this December, I want to, for the for- very first time in Nigeria or Africa, I think, invite a physicist on my podcast, Lawrence Krauss, on this specific YouTube channel, to talk about his work and science in Africa on this YouTube channel, so on this YouTube channel. Like many achievements, I can't, I can't do this alone. No. I, ca- I can't do this alone. As a sort of secularist, I, I believe a world that prides itself on, on truth and skepticism and not credulity is what we are trying to build. The talk with him will be uploaded on this particular YouTube channel, you know, and I need your subscription. I need your subscription. Please subscribe to this YouTube channel, and a donation of at least a dollar to actually push for this new world. You know. I, I, I can't do this alone. The, the amount of mis- misinformation, misinformation out there is actually great. It's very great. And we have to combat this. I, I'll be creating a series interviewing pastors from, from churches starting the next Sunday, next Sunday on this YouTube channel. Please subscribe. And please donate a single dollar to this, to this, uh, mission, please, because it is only the only way we can actually get out of this situation. We are please the description. This description to the donation will be will be linked in the in the in the uh description in on this account. If you are watching, if you are listening to this on YouTube, I will be I will be creating a series a three a three podcast episodes for the rest of this year. After a series about who wrote the books of the Bible and, and a complete examination, examination of the biblical canons. One with files to talk about impact of, the impact of Nollywood on Nigerians, religion and the supernatural. Another with Shemkuti, a physical sit down discussion with Shemkuti on the rise in the ideology of Pan Africanism and socialism in Nigeria. While the talk previously, you should check, look through my channel and actually he listen, listen to that. And, and I will be having a, a, a conversation with Lawrence Krauss. I need 2,000 subscribers to actually get this on point. Get this, get this, this done. Please, wh- while listening to this on YouTube, please donate and, and please subscribe. I need the subscription. I need the solution. I will, uh, I will be sending the invitation to Faz at the end, end of this week. And please subscribe. Subscribe to this YouTube channel if you are listening to this or you are listening to this somewhere else. Subscribe to this YouTube channel. If we are going to change in Nigeria, you know, it's be, it will be because you and I actually made it happen. 
you know, you and I, you and I, we actually relentlessly made this happen. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram and subscribe to your YouTube channel and donate as little as one dollar to make this happen. As as little as one dollar. If if we have to change Nigeria, we have to change the narrative or change Africa per se. You know, we have to change the narrative and actually get get work out there. I'll be uploading it an interview every single Sunday with pastors, leading pastors in Nigeria. Because the next one I'll be the, the one I, I should be interviewing, he, he just he wants to script the the interview, but I think I can get it done. Next week, it will be next week, next week Sunday, and I, I should be uploading it by Monday. It it will be is the assembly pastor of CSC worldwide, or uh, Ecuador assembly pastor of the Ecuador CSC worldwide headquarters in in Nigeria. I will be interviewing him on on, on this podcast, and I will be uploading it on this program. Please, everything you need is in the link in the description. Thank you for your assistance, and please enjoy the debate. And once again, I apologize for the for the echo. It is because we do not have enough enough funds and, and everything we're actually facing. We could actually have a building for this for this debate, and that is the best way to actually do it. The best way. Please subscribe to this YouTube channel and please follow me on Twitter. Follow everyone participating in this debate on Twitter. Follow Jadon on Twitter. Follow Bikobina for a follow-up of, on this debate. And please and please and please donate as little as one dollar. As little as one dollar. We will change Nigeria together. You and I. We will change it together. Thank you. Enjoy the debate. Okay, sure. Okay, so, um, first of all, I'm really, I'm really glad, glad to be part of this conversation. Uh, um, um, I think, think this, this level of this kind of conversation is growing in the media space uh, among all the other of us. Funny enough, enough, the first, first time in GDI, GDI and the interaction of this was related to this soft topic in the media. He put out to each other about to go uh, make, make my, my decisions decisions quite clear. clear. Yeah. Uh, uh, I think I really like, like, like to call this discussion, discussion more or less than debate. Yeah. Yeah. Because, because yeah. basically, yeah. sharing yeah. our thoughts and try, try to keep our decisions aside and then try and follow where I have been many business. So, the first of all, is that I think that the biological processes of life and life itself sort of point to the deliberate design and then. Uh, by that, that is, when I say God, God, I mean uh, personal and uh, mind, mind behind the universe. So that, that is my intention for God. God. Right. right. Um, so, so the, this, 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 this discussion, discussion I have is going on to the academia, both the scientific front and the philosophical front. What, what I, would I would like to do, do I'll give you four main highlights, highlights in my own statement, and then after that, I think we'll have a more detailed conversation. So, so the first thing I would like to address is the issue of design and intuition. In our everyday lives, we sort of affirm that, that, and we are all aware, aware it's evidently clear, that, that any time we see parts, parts coming, coming together, together to give sort of a coherent, coherent meaning and a functional output, output, we know that, that, that this is a saturated in my mind. This is that. that. For example, For example I, I enter a room, and then, then the bed, the bed is well lit, the TV is on. The fan is on, there is food in the microwave, the kitchen is well arranged. Obviously, right from the onset, I know that this didn't happen by accident. Moving on to that's the best of the skill. If you take a mobile phone, a mobile phone, for example, it's one of the most complex complexity. The moment I see it, I know that there is a designer behind it. But sometimes it's how when it comes to the universe, universe which has rather more, more complex components, components with higher high complexity. So, higher complexity. We are in um, the modern, modern interpretation of the modern, modern scholarly, scholarly position, sort of majority, majority of the modern scholarly position has assessed the fact that, that all of this happened by accident, which, which sort of contradicts the intuition we all have as human beings when it comes to design and how things work. Yeah, that's, that's the position I, I do exactly stand with. 
will, will um, correct, correct the, the gap, gap that's the, the theory of evolution is in. But the truth of the matter is that in 1909, the Shenzhen discoveries of fossils from the Cambrian age actually contradict Darwin's decision and gives us a platform to actually look beyond accidents and coincidences and look forward to a designer. And then the last uh, highlight be on the, the issue of, of the cell. You see, see like, like I said, said earlier on, any time we, we talk, talk about, about design, design it's, it's, we know the design, design when we see power coming together, together to, to form uh, a, 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 a functional pool. Yeah, and, and the, the very, very basic uh, form of life, life which is a cell, is a clear cut example of pieces coming, coming together, together uh, to some level of, of coherence and then producing functional, functional outputs. Output. So like, 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 like a, a running system, like, like everything that we put together to achieve, to achieve a certain thing. thing. Yeah, um, my, my reference, reference is with the, the central part of biology. biology. That's, that's the essential idea, idea of life, life. The, the, the formation, formation of proteins, proteins. and the proteins which are responsible for the structures we all have. And in how our biological, biological makeup, makeup is. is. Um, the whole, whole idea of DNA, DNA converting, uh, get, get, get them and MRNA, MRNA, the transcription process, the transcription process, 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 process and protein, protein formation, in, in the particular, particular form, form, form in the to perform a particular form, function, all points to the idea that this, this, this couldn't, couldn't have happened by accident. accident. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure, sure as competitions will be able to address the very details of these are like I'm giving. These are the pointers. I have, I have uh, uh, to assess a position that, that just, just like, like in our everyday lives, lives uh, a lot, lot of uh, when we see things that things that we part inside, we know, know that, that someone, someone who had an insight had to do it. it. It's the same with the biological approaches. You can, you don't have to think far. far. Um, it's just that the only odd one in that scale is the theory of evolution. That life and then the Complexity now, now is a result, result of not accident. Okay. Thank, thank you. All right, all right. Uh, uh, Jide, you are up for the Christian people. Thank you very much. Um, so I'll just pick up from where I am. Once again, let me know when I was just going to be a little bit of a time. All right. So, so uh, my, my, my opponent is defined God, God as. as the personal, personal mind behind, behind you. Yes. Now, um, from, from what, what I understand, understand that, that definition is not exactly that sufficient because, because that, that just means to be a chaos of some sort, sort of, of uh, uh, the 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 some kind of abstract, abstract mind, mind out there, or some, some, some kind, kind of psychic, you know, whatever it is. It does not have to get us the mystic God that is a Christian or the Old Way or whoever it is. Defense. Uh, 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 mind that, the topic, the topic of the BB is to know whether that the facts of biology point to, to God, God, not that they point to a self like that. So that's, that's just my question. So I'll just carry, carry on with my, my opening statement. statement. So, so um, basically, basically, I'm going to present some, some, you know, you know sort, sort of arguments, arguments to see if I can um, uh, establish the fact that, that uh, we, 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 we can. can same with, with some, some very reasonable degree of confidence that, that uh, we are we not designed in any sense, sense at least in the biological sense so that parts of biology, biology do not point, point to an intelligent designer design or to a good goal, I should say. Um, so, so as, as I said earlier, there are certain, certain essential attributes that God has, from the potential relationship to the benevolence, personality, the mind, and the skipping of rationality and all that. So, um, but, but the first thing I'm going to say about this is that, that based, based on our, you know, science, science, which I would, I would say that, that the science is you know, generally regarded as one of the best methods of acquiring all knowledge out there, there. One, one of the best, best epistemological tools that we have. Um, um, science, science tells us that organic intelligence is, is a property of mind, mind or property of mind. By organic intelligence, I mean, you, know, you can't get anything that we are very, very familiar, familiar with, human intelligence. intelligence. That's, that's the kind that, that we have around. around. That's, that's very, very obvious. obvious. Now, the, now, the same, same science, science also told us. Told us. If a science has never determined that there is any mind beyond the physical body, body. As, as a matter of fact, fact all, all the evidence we have suggests that, that the mind is, if not a direct consequence of 
is almost entirely dependent on the brain. brain. So, so there are people who say that, that the mind is the brain, brain who are you know, the doctor physical and, and there are people who say that, that you know, know the, the brain produces the mind. Or the, or the you know, the main produces mental content, content, which, which is, is you know, kind of the physical and all that. And, all that. Um, and then and there, there are other, other you know, um, theories, theories of mind, mind out there. there. But, but the basic idea, idea here is that, that all, all the evidence that we have points point against idealism, the idea that mind is ontologically prior to matter. Um, in other words, it is in the mind that first exists. In other words, it is God that first exists. And all our scientific evidence points against that. Therefore, it is very reasonable to conclude that as far as science tells us, that there is no mind in that part of the world. So that already on the mind process is that there is a God somewhere. Um, I'm going to be talking about an analogical reference later, maybe in, in, in the rebuttal session. But, but what I'm going to be Talking, talking about, about mostly, mostly here, here because we're talking, talking about, about the part of biology. biology. So, so uh, when, when it comes to biology, biology we, we are talking, talking about evolution. evolution. Evolution is like, like the standard of biology. biology. It's basically the way we understand how the entire biological world makes sense. As a matter of fact, um, Ukrainian geneticists, the theologians of the Giants, once said, nothing in biology makes sense except in the light of evolution. And, and I think that's, that's very true. true. And, and now, now what's, what's evolution? evolution? Basically, Basically put, evolution is a change in the frequency of genes of evolution over time. time. So, so that's, that's, I'm not going to find out that we're going to do the whole lecture of evolution. And, and the, the argument, and my central argument, argument is going to be that, that evolution as described by, you know, maybe the modern synthesis that are modern theory, or if you want to add maybe as any evolutionary synthesis or some sort, um, that account, that, that, that characteristic account of biological, biological development adequately explains basically all, or at least has the potential to explain all of our observations in the biological world. There is no need for any supernatural input, any intelligent input to, to get it in there. Um, so that's what's been the central argument, argument for today. And if you and understand, understand how, how evolution works, evolution works by the processes of mutation and natural selection. So mutation is when you have having the, 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 um, the DNA, DNA or the RNA, RNA in an organism, the virus or bacterium or whatever, whatever it is. is. Uh -huh. you, you have random changes in the genetic. This random change there's a probability function in the sense that tells us that if some organisms are more likely to survive, even if the and this is sufficient to account for how organisms develop over time. time. As, As a matter of fact, fact evidence that the life began, began on the planet, planet around um, 3.7 3. 3. 7 million years ago, and, and this, this process of evolution, evolution by natural, natural selection has, has gone on since then. then. So, so we, we have, have a lot of evidence to show that. that Evolution, evolution by natural evolution is a self-contained naturalistic process that does not require any input from, from any, any outside intelligence for it to work. work. And the argument I'm going to be is that uh, if at all, all there is even dying in nature, I'm not, not conceding that, that there is, but let's just concede that, that, that there is some kind, kind of intelligent design or whatever. whatever. That, that design cannot can be the god of traditional theism. That's how you can put it in the form of the lens of the Why do I say so? so? Uh, the, the, central, the central point here, here is that the design, design of nature the points to a weak, weak in naive or malevolent deities. That's not even the point to any design, design at, at all. all. Why, Why do I say this? So, so, just because, because if you have design, design you have design, 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 something, design, you, you want, want to design, design the best, best possible. Gadgets. gadgets. The reason, the reason why, why human engineers engineer always design, design the best possible gadgets, possible gadgets is because they are limited in power or they are limited in knowledge or they are not as successful to you in the sense. But if you have, have maximum, maximum power, maximum knowledge, maximum knowledge, we would expect you to do the maximum results that you can. However, when we look around the world, we don't see so called maximum results. As a matter of fact, the results that we see are exactly what we should expect. If evolution should be natural, it's true. But we're not what we should expect if, if you know, it's some kind of intelligent, super intelligent mind would be doing the thing. For example, we have inefficient or pointless design. For example, for example um, we have, have vestigial, vestigial thinking. For example, the flight light that has 
a huge thing that costs a lot of energy, but it doesn't use its life. You have ostrich and, and, and you know, flat legs going on that much. Now, now um, uh, the, the, they have, have organisms that are very close to the evolutionary history, but still, we see that this is this is vestigial features are a sign that they are in line with the evidence, as I say, for the fact that we have available over time in the million years. We also have things like left recurrent laryngeal nerves, which in the giraffe takes 15 to the top from its throat down to the heart and then back to the brain, which are talking things called this in which they think no engineer would ever make. We also have the blind spot of the mammalian eye. We have you know, cells that are very close to the body, like, 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 like um, breast cells, cells like, like prostate cells, cells. All, all this is point to a weak, weak designer. Design. We, also we also have, have things like infectious like diseases, like, like diarrhea, typhoid, Lyme, Lyme disease, or whatever it is. You have this, the, 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 the reason why, why this is very crucial is because you have other organisms that have to live inside of organisms, inside of other organisms. We have to send them pain and suffering. We will not expect an omnipotent or the benevolent to do things this way. We also have congenital diseases. Diseases that are there right when you are born. Diseases like very terrible diseases like cystic fibrosis, like hyperphagiosis, autoimmune disorders and all that. And more crucially, we also have mental disorders. Uh, like, like ADHD, schizophrenia, psychopathy, OCD. These are all things that affect the mental, mental state, state for a human being. We also have natural disasters, disasters like, like earthquakes, tsunamis, cyclones, cyclones hurricanes. hurricanes. All, all these things put together are simply to heighten the amount of evil and suffering in the world. world. And, and lower, uh, uh, not, not just heighten the evil and suffering, but they heighten the, you know, the, you know, our recognition of bad design in the world out there. Now, now, I'm not going to talk clearly about, about the emergencies. I don't, I don't know how many things I have left, left. but well, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing I'm already getting to the tail end of, of my um, speech. So I'm going to spend many minutes time to talk to briefly about, about the biogenesis. But if I have a biogenesis, it's not a very real field of biology because it's just maybe like under 100 years since it's been studied. Or the people have speculated down in the history on where life has come from, where they have been, and basically everybody would be looking for God. And the very first observation that people used to have was that this is sort of a that makes also living things. It's different from sort of a that makes also no living things. Like, like, like have these two separate kinds kind of substances in the universe. This, this was for the first observation of until Frederick Wohler in 1828 was able to synthesize urea from ammonium cyanide. Now, now, urea, urea was something that was going to be produced only by living things, but it was able to synthesize it chemically, naturally. And this was the first step into people thinking that, hey, maybe maybe livestock and livestock can actually be that that lower out the line. Between, between that, that. And, and then you have things like, like the Miller Ray experiment that shows that, that in early earth conditions, conditions you could have, have you could produce simple organic molecules such as amino acids. acids. If, if you have enough, enough you know, you know, substrate there, there and you have, have energy coming from the form of you know, light or something like that. that. Now, now, there have been more refined examples, more refined experiments down through the years that have produced. Not, not just, just the kind of amino acids that, that Mila and Ray are but what stable, stable most of the amino acids, amino acids and, and even some nucleotides. And we also found that, that um, it's, it's possible, possible for some, some of these things to exist in outer space. space. For example, for example, the case of the meteorite that fell in Australia in 1969 contained L amino acids, suggesting that life can form anywhere in the universe if it can push out right now. More and more experiments have shown that macromolecules can form. And even in the know, succession of strains of RNA and all that. Now, now lip 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 then evolve by natural sensation to more, more sophisticated levels in the clinical lab. Give you a very, 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 very rough sketch. I can't go through the biogenesis entirely in a short speech. But what, what, what I'm the main point I'm trying to make here is that this entire process is entirely plausible. 
is no able to, to be able, able to occur by purely chemical means with, with no supernatural mind required to perpetuate it. So that's what, what we have as far as biology is concerned. So we have plausible explanations for how life could have been reasoned by natural means. Now, we don't know the definite answer. Say for our partners, there will be no definitive answer to this. But, but all, all the answers that we have so far, all the scientific answers that we have so far, point in the direction that, that it is very likely arose on its, on its own, own through stochastic chemical, chemical processes. processes. It, it, it's, it's not, not something, something that, that had to come, come by some, some intelligence. intelligence. So that's the um, central, central argument, not the Lala part. So I think that would be. Or for, for this, this for my fitness speech, but I'm going to like, like I, I, I'd like, like to just, just make a full bottle, bottle um, which, which I'm going to continue in the bottle section. My, my, my opening sentence is something about, about scientists, scientists say all of the universe has happened by accident or by chance. Now, I'd like, like to remind my opponent that we are not talking about the universe, we're talking about the facts of biology specifically. So, if you want to talk about the big time, you want to talk about star formation, you want to talk about all those things, you can have a lot of debate about all those things later. But that's not the debate we're having right now. We're talking about the facts of biology specifically. And I think I'm able to show. Hopefully, Hopefully it goes most of the change anyway. But, but I think I've been able, able to show so far, so far um, that, that the facts, facts of biology um, tell, tell us, facts of science, science should, should, uh, biology specifically, tell, tell us that we should, should not think, think that, that the world or the, the, the you know, biological things that we observe today have been created by any mind. mind. Because logically, it's no mind. We don't have any evidence for any mind that is dependent on matter. And the mutation of natural selection is well adequate to explain all the things that we observe. And the design of the choke points to the fact that any designer who would have designed this would not be you know, the, the god or the movie And also, also epigenesis is slowly due to so chemical natural processes. Thank, thank you, you very much. All right. That was a nice, nice uh, intro for you guys, for both guys. You know, we, I lost you for a bit, but I got you guys back. You know, both guys, I, I lost uh, and Bill, Bill also for a bit. All right, Bill, uh, Bill you're, you're up for your first rebuttal. It's a time duration, a time duration rebuttal. Yup. Okay. Yeah. So, so I think um, from, from the statements given here, initially, we are we are saying that we are addressing this five skill. skill. I thought we were going to discuss about establishing the, the idea of intelligent design, design, and then, then we go on to proceed to the evolution of the technology of the Whether that is not something you give room for intelligent design. Because, because if, if we are to smuggle in, in, in the resources, it will, it will push the conversation from being a scientific one, one to, to a philosophical and technological power. power. But that's that will be the final way we are not going to have a conversation. Okay. okay. So, and then, and then about the fact that I said that the scientists said that the universe came up as a result of a substitution for abandonment. Yeah, I'm actually referring to the universe as a grand scale. Biological, biological processes. The whole idea, idea of natural selection is coincidence and mutation. That, that um, an allele is introduced of the mutation and then the mutation happens. That's an accident. If it's not a deliberate design, it's an accident or coincidence and mutation. That's what we're trying to do. And then not have a mutation of the allele. They have a mutation of the allele. So, if, if, so, admitted to the premise, first of all, if there is a design, Okay, and uh, uh, if there's just design or design, which I'm which talking to himself, say that, that um, um, the study of nature and the relationships about dealing with uh, seeing that, that, that seeing design, design in, in, in you understand. understand. Um, I already, already have established the position that, that any time you see pieces come together, together give, give us a certain level of coherence and meaning, we quickly, based on our everyday experiences of the vision, know that there is a mind behind this product that we have seen. seen. But, but somehow, somehow, we have been told to, to, to uh, wipe all that off the table, table and then embrace, embrace this notion <laughs> that this is complexity we have seen, basically, is as a result of random, random um, mutations and, and variations, which, which I agree, agree to one extent, extent like that we have established. These mutations in slight variations happen on a smaller scale, scale. But, but we don't see these variations, we use to make the evidence and science 
right? right. Yes, yes, yes. Like I mentioned my friend in the kitchen. That that mm-hmm. ten, ten years, years, we have all these digital lines from Trump and which, which, which defies the WMU position. We are taking, taking all the practices into consideration. The change, the rate, the change, change, the 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 can can all these lives come up in uh, 10 million years. years. And then we, we see that the middle line from scheme up about 580 million years to so so apply the defense uh, life, life from the so society. So you understand? Okay, so, so, so that's, that's established. And, and, and if, yeah, yeah, yeah. From the from premise, premise that there is an intelligent design, design. 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 So, 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 so. Um, and then say that, that so this is a weak design. design. The weak design, the weak design that has not, not nullified the idea of the design. You understand? And, and if, if this is a deistic or you're using the right to really make that initiation, how do we know that this is the best design, design of this school? And then and how, how, on, on what ground do we say this is a, is a bad, bad design? design? On what ground do we say this is a bad design? On what ground do we say this is a bad design? On what ground do we say this is a bad design? It's like you are you are calling for the point of the world and attacking it at the same time. So, so, so that, that's also the thing, thing we should show better. Um, and now, now about, about the issue of um, things, things coming, coming up from pure chemical, chemical resources, resources and biological stuff. Now, the question I would like to ask is that, that now, uh, you, you mentioned, mentioned about, about the genesis of uh, the, the biological carbon. How do you explain that, that all some of all the factors needed life life begin by a all, all those, those chemical, chemical means, means at, at one point, point in time, yes, yes, I don't know. All, all of us are having happening in the fine teachings of what life. life. How, how do you explain that? that? How, how do you bring, bring that, that to life? life? You know, so, that's so, um, and another, another thing, thing you have to point out. So, so my, my major, major claim in this, 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 and where, where everything begins, uh, how, how life is just in the back. Who takes initiation in the cell? cell. Now, now uh, works by, by people, people like your glass acts and then like the same thing. Show that, that for, for you to produce a coherent, a, a functional protein series, a protein in amino acid. The probability that the protein that will be forged based on the genetic code in by a random mutation and selection as perpetrated by if we will just is, is that, that we have, have one, one functional, functional um, protein out of, of 10, 10 to the power 7, 7, 7, 7 and 10. 10. And, and we all have a few of us are aware that there are the approximately 10, 10 to the power 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, to shoot at, at one, one particular uh, atom, atom in, in all the display, and uh, uh, I, I, I can, can do that, that right, right, and then release that over, over and over, over again. again. It just doesn't add up. How, how we, uh, the, 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 the gap, gap is just too wide, wide to, to see that, that this is a happy end This is the new design. design. This, this is line. line. It, 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 it just, just contradicts everything you do. And our design institution, we all sorts of have. So, yeah, so, so, those, those are my, 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 my points, points with the which this GDA has made. made. That, that one, a weak, weak designer, designer, we have, have no ground to say this is a weak design. design. How, How do you know this is not the best design out today? And, and, and I don't know what, what, what does he expect uh, to give the board the information to have a design to put out that design? How do we know that? This, this is, is not, not a good If he brings in the same thing, that's what I wanted to talk about. If he brings in the same thing, that's what I wanted to talk about. If he brings in the same thing, that's what I wanted to talk about. If he brings in the same thing, that's what I wanted to talk about. If he brings in the same thing, that's what I wanted to talk about. If he brings in the same thing, that's what I wanted to talk about. If he brings in the same thing, that's what I wanted to talk about. If he brings in the same thing, that's what I wanted to talk about. If he brings in the same thing, that's what I wanted to talk about. If he brings in the same thing, that's what I wanted to talk about. If he brings in the same thing, that's what I wanted to talk about. If he brings in the same thing, that's what I wanted to talk about. If he brings in the same thing, that's what I wanted to talk about. If he brings in the same thing, that's what I wanted to talk about. If he brings in the same thing, that's what I wanted to talk about. If he brings in uh, GD, you are up for your first uh, your, for your first rebuttal. Okay, okay. all right. All right. Um, so, so I'm, I'm going to try, try to be. I hope I'm going to be heavy, right? Yeah. Okay, okay all, right. all right. So please so let, let me know if I, when, when I have, I have like, like one one more minute. Yeah, yeah. I, I will let you know. Okay, okay. So. so 
so, so I guess I'm responding, responding to, to some, some of his points, some of his mentals in the Roman Benjamin's discussion. Like that. Um, just, well, I'm just, just going to say something about that. that. I raised four major points. points. I raised the point about idealism. I raised the point about mutation and selection. I raised the point about weak design. I raised the point about AI genesis. Now, he left the objection, sorry, he left the argument of idealism absolutely more than this. So, so yeah, yeah, I that thing, so, so I'm going to address it like that. Now, now um, he, he said in the Google Play statement that, that we have, have design, design intuition, intuition and that the parts coming together, together to perform specific functions in the implied design. design. Um, um, I've, I've asked, asked this before from you, you in our personal, personal discussion. Um, and I think I pointed out something in there that, that how, how do we know when something is designed? We're going to get to this in the discussion session. Like, like, what's, what's the marker of design? design? He says, says complexity is the marker of design. design. Well, I'm well, going to say, if complexity is the marker of design, design then they can say that things like, like two-two peaks, peaks or chopsticks are not designed. Because they're, 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 they're not complex. complex. They're very simple. simple. A two-two peak is just a small stick that you use to pick your teeth out or something. So there's nothing complex about that. Just one piece of wood. Yet, it's very, very, very can't say it's not designed. Um, also, also it's too big, it doesn't have, have, have past. past. It, 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 it's, it's just, just one, one thing. thing. I mean, I mean you can talk about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's just, just one, one thing. thing. So, so would, would, you, would you say it doesn't have past? It's design. So, so, I don't think, I think that's, that's very important. Now, now, coherence. coherence. Now, we'll talk about, about coherence as a macro design. Coherence is something that we regularly attribute to language. Right? Regularly attribute to a proposition or statement or claims or things like that or arguments. It's not the kind of thing that we apply to. Things that, that we find in nature, nature like, like molecules, molecules or, or atoms, atoms or chemical, or chemical reactions. reactions. So, so what's, what's, what's the, the idea, idea of saying the um, central of my analogy is coherent? That's, that's, that's that maybe you're actually doing some, some kind, kind of proposed in to the, the um, process, process, which, which is, is not what my analogy tells us. My analogy tells us that the function that proteins have is something that they developed over time. When there's a discussion, there's a discussion, there's a discussion. They said, they said about, about the third order biologists in the U.S. is one one that was in the league. But I don't know the proper situation, but I think I've read something like this before. And in that meeting, what they discussed was what to say that that was in the sport. It was to say that there are some parts, there are some things that are observed that the current Darwin theory might not be able to explain without some kind of modification that we might need to, you know, Bring up an extended evolutionary synthesis where we consider things like, like, like evolutionary development, where we consider things like the rule of the epigenetic factors and things like, like that, that in, in, you know, know um, the, the whole process, process of evolution. evolution. Now, now, it says Darwin, Darwin is right, right to an extent, extent but, but Darwin, 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 Darwin is also sufficient to explain. The development, the development of new species. species. I, I wonder what evidence is going to give you for because there is an abundance of evidence to show that, that Darwin actually, actually tells us how new species, species are made. And, and this isn't just something that, that we theorize, but this, this is something that, that we have observed. There. This is something that, that we see, see something that, that we have actual, actual evidence for. For, for example, the, the, the study that was done on a particular lizard species that was. I think, I think the, the, I can't remember, remember the, the exact um, uh, playlist that, that has happened. This study has happened. But, but the findings, findings of the study actually, actually show, show that, that the lizard in just, just the about 30, 30 or 40 years, years developed a completely new structure, structure completely new structure, structure in the anatomy. Yeah, um, they, they went, went from, from a carnivorous uh, diet to a herbivorous diet. diet. And, and this, this was due to maybe since you decide to go through it later. We've also seen studies of the birds that have shown Speciation happening, allopatric speciation happening. Oh, sorry, sorry, this, this was happening in uh, That have happened. Live and direct, it was observed directly. And this, this is something that, that, that we all got to We've also seen it happen in Drosophila species. We've also seen it happen in microorganisms as well. So, so um, whatever I think that you say, maybe in my preparation or something, you may have to take a look at that when we get into this question. Now, you say, that means it's not good because it says some things came by accident. accident. Actually, Actually, evolution should not be an accident. It is mutation should not be an accident. The selection process, which is natural selection, is actually, um, so to speak, it is the relativity part of the whole thing. What, what it does is to get rid of the disadvantaged inputs, or the ones who are not, the ones who are not looking enough to reproduce, and it preserves the ones who are looking enough to reproduce.
introduced and passed to the end. So in that sense, it is not just a random process. The entire process itself is not random. Now the mutations are random. The natural occurrences are that that you know you make the mutations happen. Uh, are random. Random. But, but the selection, selection process itself, itself is, is, not, not, is not random. random. Uh, uh, he says there are gaps in the evolution of Darwinism. Of course, there are gaps in all of our scientific knowledge. That doesn't follow from that intelligent design and intelligent things. You said evolution is successive accidents and coincidences. This is not entirely true. This is not entirely true. I'll explain it right now. Natural selection is not a coincidence. It's something that is, you know, it's a regularity. It's the parts that really leads the entire process. Then you talk about the Cambrian explosion. That, that happened about 570 million years ago. Um, I, I understand, understand why the current explosion should be called an explosion. Uh, and that's, that's because, because of the really, really short time frame um, um, in, in which, which it happened. happened. However, there are a number of objections that I will offer to this. this. First, First of all, of all the current explosion is not even an explosion. explosion. That, that's because, because it took about 25 to 40 million years. Now, now, just, just for comparison, we have seen the entire new structure to develop in less than 30 to 40 years. years. Now, now, think, think of what would have happened in the space of maybe 1 million, million years, years, let alone 10 million, 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 million years, years let, let alone 14 million years. years. We've, We've seen um, you know, animals animal develop, develop from, evolve from ambulocytos to parasitos, all the way to the modern, modern, what we call them, modern sensation we have. Uh, whales and things and, things and uh, uh, orcas and all of that. We've, we've seen that, that happen in, in, you know, in a relatively short species, species as well. well. So, so we know that, that rapid, rapid evolution shall come up now. What's that? Why, why rapid, rapid evolution, evolution shall come up that way? There are many other tests that have gone around about the current evolution. But one of the things that I've is that there was an increase in oxygen level in the ocean. Now, now, this is a process is disputed. There was also um, there, there was also the hypothesis of you know, you know glaciation. You know, there was a uh, sort of melt down that, that, that drew down, down nutrients and you know, you know um, uh, inorganic substances into the ocean, ocean. and reaching the ocean and making it able for for predation and uh, you know other things that drive the ocean to evolve. And that's why we have that kind of rapid evolution. Now, to be clear, there were. More no, no, cellular organisms that were that had developed, developed before, before the Cambrian Resolution. There were even predators, predators that had developed, developed before the Cambrian Resolution. It was just that the factors in the environment, environment were, were not suitable enough for them, them to have that, that kind of rapid, rapid change. change. And, and we, 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 we know that, that such a rapid change can happen because, because we have been used to it. Even in our own, you know, small setting. There's a particular experiment that was done some time ago where in just one year we were able to evolve. And a fungus, fungus from, from a, a, a cellular organism to a cellular organism. So we so know that when there is there evolutionary, evolutionary pressure, pressure that, 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 that can produce organisms that evolve in that, that rapid process. process. Um, so so uh, again, again it talks about, about the design means parts coming together, together and using the coherence. Now, this idea of coherence is like coherence is something that we expect of things like languages, of things like propositions, of things like concepts, or ideas, or arguments. It's not what we expect from things like natural. Things, things like, like chemicals, chemicals or whatever. Or whatever. The, reason the reason why, why you're looking at DNA and saying, oh, DNA yeah, yeah, shows you, right? It's because you look at the central problem of biology and it produces these things, things that actually carry out the functions and, you know, you, you can, can drive, drive the evolution. And that's, and that's why, why you think, oh, for it to produce this, it must have been directed towards the particular lagoon. That is not necessarily true. True. We can't infer that from the fact that we How many minutes do I have? You have a minute, just seven minutes. Oh. Okay, 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 this is the thing that now I don't I don't I don't agree with this argument. But I'm, but I'm saying, saying if I grant that this argument is true, then it works against his position, his position in that, that uh, we should be agnostic, be agnostic about, about what the best possible, possible design is. Because if we have design in the church about what's the design, then we should also have design in the church about what the best design should be. And I think that works too. So if we have a church about that, we expect that design to be this way. And then they see that it's not that way. 
then that intuition tells us that the person who designs these things is not not hard to in a certain sense. Maybe the person is not powerful enough, or the person is not smart enough, or the person is not kind enough to do the proper kind of design that you want. So that's my argument against that. So either it gives up this idea of agnosticism, I keep designing intuition, or it gives up designing intuition, I keep the idea of agnosticism. So that's what I was saying. So with that, I'm done. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, Bill, you are up for your second rebuttal. Okay, right. Is this second rebuttal? Yeah, it's second rebuttal. Like, you have two rebuttals, then a uh, cross examination. Oh, okay. Thank you. So, I really like the first one on the side. I think if if we have we have a So the first thing I like to coherent now now it's true. Coherence is sometimes we assess we attribute matters. I see language and instruction is the medium for any invention. Language and instruction. Language to write instruction and then instruction means that it helps us bring about invention. Now, when you look at the language, like I mentioned, the very basic unit of life is the cell, which is responsible for the life life we have. It is clear from the processes of which we are using that the DNA contains. Instructions, how, 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 the fact, the fact that, that it's okay, okay if the whole idea of the functional yeah. element mean, happens one, one in, in a blue moon. But, but this time, it happens and it repeats itself. itself. What, what consists in repeats itself? itself? It, it shows, shows a certain level of deliberacy in, in the whole process of um, putting the mission. So that's what I'm going to say. Why are you coherent? And then I didn't say that I wasn't in school. I didn't say that I wasn't in school. I agree to, to the, the new that we need to the more modern synthesis. How, how is it explaining? Is that beautiful? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How is it explaining? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How, yeah, yeah. how some, some yeah, yeah. creatures and organisms, organisms adapt, adapt to their, their uh, environment, environment based on uh, the practices and, 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 and how, how they, they develop, develop certain, certain things. Life, life things. But, but what I'm saying is that they are only for the new that we need to teach. How long does that bear the full weight of the life that we have? And then I brought from that that that's it. Right, right. 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 And he me- he mentioned something like um the lizard experiment and um how life uh, what's it called uh, the lizard developed new structures yeah, those like like I said that has been the good thing the the lizard does not change in in core there are various slight changes that help the lizard to adapt and I said most times in, if in in all these experiments when they look at the basic protein structure of the lizard they don't change and in my could be his work like I was um, going forward to explain. What happened with the Darwinian process is that it breaks genes. Things that already exist are inhibited or are exposed. That is the whole idea. That is the marker of um, evolution by natural selection and mutation. And I agree, yes, mutations are random. And so not all mutations are um, advantageous to the species and everything. But the issue is that the mutation, the idea that the, the, the mutations are random is actually a, a marker of design. because. This is an organism who is going to be living in an extremely unpredictable environment, an, a, a, an environment with random um, variables. If the organism is not intent, random internally, the organism will not be able to survive. So the random nature of the mutation itself is an indicator of a design. 
Right. So that is one thing. And then he mentioned something about um uh, yeah, yeah, I think that's that is about it. And like I said, Darwin himself has said to the challenge the Cambrian explosion brings on the table with regards to the theory of evolution by natural selection. Yeah, sure. Thank you. All right, all right. Uh uh you're up. GD uh, okay. I think your last rebuttal. Okay, yes, my final rebuttal. Yeah. Now, um, I don't know if I'm going to be rebutting what he said first or what he said now. So it's a whole lot to put together. So but I'm going to try my best. Now, he said something like, um, in the first, in, in, in his um, first rebuttal, he said something like, the math of mutation and selection doesn't add up. I don't agree with that at all. Uh, um, I've, I've read some literature. I'm not a mathematician. Admittedly, I'm not very good in math. I'm a biologist. So mathematicians usually mock biologists that we're not good in math anyway but um i've i've read some literature on this some not much admittedly but the, some of the ones i've read have considered that the people who did the math like fred hoyle for example actually got the math wrong because they they were calculating things that they should not be calculating for example they were calculating the probability of proteins right now like you know modern proteins you know and the way they they are you know the, the way they're holding and all that they missed the point that for example Proteins might not have been the first things that were, you know, the um, the job doing molecules. For example, the best hypothesis we have currently is that RNA was what was doing that, and not protein. So, I mean, that rules that out to some extent. Um, then it talks about it talks about weak design is still design, and that Darwin says that things seem design. Yes, agreed. Um, uh, sorry, Dawkins, not Darwin. Um, Dawkins said that the same design, they appear design, yes. But of course, the appearance of design does not imply design. That I mean, we can all agree to that, right? So we need evidence for design itself. And the appearance of design is not evidence of design. Just like the appearance of a phantom in your room does not prove that there's a phantom in your room. Um, so he said, about, he said something like, how do you know things about what God would do about suffering? I guess that's a theological issue we might discuss it we might discuss it in the uh, in the opening open discussion session and i think i've responded to his question on how do i know that this is not the best possible design of course i told him that if we're going by his design intuition argument he's going to contradict this now um it talks about in a biogenesis he said how do i explain all things coming out all at once and the simple thing i'm going to say there is that i don't have to explain all things coming out all at once because they did not in fact come out all at once the the um when the earth was formed about 4.54 billion years ago there was a whole lot of chaotic process and please have a little correction then to about uh you can't Sorry? interrupt you can't interrupt until it's done you, you can continue your discussion in the in the crossfire forum but you can you can't interrupt un until it's done uh Jaden, continue all right That's okay. okay all right thanks so bill any any mistake i make just note it down and when we get to the um open discussion you can correct me there so let me just carry on with this. So the thing is, the Earth settled down with, you know, the water and everything around 4 billion years ago. The first evidence that we have from, you know, I think from Australia, the stromatolite fossils that we have from Australia dates to around 3.6 or at the latest, or at the earliest, I should say, 3.7 billion years ago. So that gives us at least 300 million years for abiogenesis to have happened in. That's 300 million years. 300 million years is a very long process. It's a very long time. And we can hardly call that immediately or all at once. It didn't happen that way. It took a long time. The process took a long time. And um, uh, there, there, there is evidence that there are factors that could have stabilized the molecules along the way. For example, it's easier for lipid biomolecules, you know, um, which are called, you know, surfactants, to, to stay more integral you know to have more integrity if they form on clay surfaces and these clay surfaces have been found at the bottom of the ocean near hydrothermal vents so um that point don't really work here then it said dna contains instruction now i've told my friend bill before that you know because of the nature of you know um biological study and all that because of the nature of language it's very difficult for us to talk about things like dna without using words like instruction coding or translation, or interpretation, or things like that. But the truth is, all these words are actually approximations. They are, analog they are analogical, in a sense. It doesn't mean that when I say, for example, that DNA contains information, I'm talking about 
DNA contains an instruction like maybe Jesus loves you, something like that. That's not the kind of information that DNA, it does, it's not a kind of information that a mind can understand or that the mind can interpret. What, what we mean, of course, humans can adapt to it because it's an information um, carrying molecule in a certain analogical sense. We can adapt it to carry some kind of information. I mean, just the way we do with logic and things like that. I and mean, then we use logic, you know, to form information in computers and all that. But the point I'm trying to make here is that the central dogma of biology of going from DNA to RNA using um, transcriptase and then going from RNA to proteins is a completely stochastic chemical process that is not being driven by a mind or is not being understood by a mind. It's not communication from one mind to another. He gave an example of, you know, you can't scatter the letters in the alphabet and then you get maybe, for example, go and go and eat randomly. And you can you can't just look at that and say, oh, that must have come by random chance. Actually, first of all, if you do that in, for a very, very long time and you have some kind of self-correcting process that makes it the case that you can produce such languages, you can have that. But that's even beside the point. The point here is that DNA is not, not like that. DNA is not a language. It's not something that you translate from one mind to another. I, um, so let me just put a stop to that because of time. Now, you talked about that you believe that evolution is true, but it can't tell us everything about biological development. It can't tell us all the facts about biological development. And then you came back to Cambrian, to the Cambrian um, explosion. And you said the Cambrian explosion lasted for 10, for just 10 million years. Now, I'm currently on the Life Science website, and I'm going to read what Life Science says. Life Science says, the Cambrian explosion is the first geological time period of the Paleozoic era, which is the time of ancient life. This period lasted about 53 million years and marked a dramatic burst of evolutionary changes in life on Earth, known as the Cambrian explosion. Among the animals that evolved during this period, the recordings and all that and all that and all that. So um, you look at, I mean, it says here, for example, that the Cambrian, the Cambrian period, which was when you know, there was a burst forth of life, itself alone took about 53 million years. The other sources I've seen have said that the range, the official range, because I, I double checked just to correct that, the official range is from somewhere between 15 to 30 million years. So it's actually not. 10 million years, but you can you can take any number you want, basically. Um, whether it's 10 million years, whether it's 30 million years, no matter what it is, it's still a very huge time frame for uh, multicellular organisms to get into you know, more serious evolutionary, evolutionary arms races and produce a prodigious amount of um, you know, new life forms. Now, how this could have happened, we don't know, we're still studying it, but it's, that's not an argument to say that um, it's impossible for evolution to explain it. Just like, you know, the way I would say that, the way you tell me that we don't know why God would choose some kind of suffering around another, you wouldn't agree with me that that means that God could not have any reason to do it that way. So um, I'll just be that way. Then you said fossils, there are fossils in the Cambrian that contradicted Darwinian position. I would like examples of such fossils. Now, you said you want evidence that evolution can produce new structures. Um, I talked about a lizard species. The, the article is right here in front of me, so I'm, I'm not going to read the entire thing, but I'll just read a section of it. The section says, researchers found that the lizard developed sickle valves, muscles between the large and small intestine that slowed down food digestion in fermenting chambers, which allowed their bodies to process the vegetation cellulose into volatile fatty acids. And then one of the researchers said this, they evolved an expanded gut to allow them to process these leaves. This was a brand new structure. So I could send you the article after so you can go through it. But I mean, that's just one line of evidence that shows that this is a biologist saying clearly that they observed the lizard developing brand new structures in their own world and putting them now. So that's what they said. Now you said um, the evolution doesn't develop new proteins. New proteins don't come out. Uh, evolution only destroys genes. It doesn't create new genes. Um, I say that's absolutely not true. We have observed many mechanisms through which new genes can be developed. DNA uh, replication, sometimes DNA um, sections can be duplicated. And this has been seen in a lot of flowering plants and a lot of grasses. Um, um, in fact, almost all of the entire genome has been duplicated. This is according to Dr. Joel Anson. Um, uh, you look at that, and then you look at things like bacteria, for example. 
Um, I, I study microbiology, so I know a little bit about this. Um, bacterial genes also have what we call plasmid, and they can transmit this plasmid you know, through horizontal gene transfer. So in that way, you can have different genes being inserted into one person's, one organism's, um, uh, should I say, genome like that. Now, your question is, you, you, might, you might want to ask and say something like, well, the lizards are still lizards or the bacteria are still bacteria. And I'm simply going to tell you that what you need for you to get the kind of evolution that changes a lizard into a dinosaur or a dinosaur into a bird, which of course birds are still dinosaurs, the kind of time frame that you need for that is not what we have. We've only been studying evolution for about 150 years and you need millions and millions Millions and millions of years to actually see evolution happening in real time. And nobody can ever live that long, at, at least as far as we know right now. So that's not, and, but, but despite the fact that we can't live that long to observe it happening in real time, we have lots and lots and lots of evidence. Just in the same way that you know, nobody actually witnesses a murder, but we can look at the evidence at the murder scene and infer that somebody committed the murder. You have in the same way, we can't, we can't say that, oh, we saw, okay, all right, I'll round up, thank you. We can't see the entire process happening. But we can look at all the trails it left on the way, the fossils, the fossil genes in our body, comparative anatomy, biogeography, and all that. And we can infer from that that evolution um, can actually produce new structures. Um, and he said, the, Darwin said the Cameron expression brings a challenge. Yeah, Darwin could have said that. He didn't have enough information. We have more information now than he did. Of course, we don't have all the answers, but um, the best evidence that we have currently suggests that the Cambrian expression is not a fatal objection to. The evolutionary theory and Darwin himself actually said this that the, the objections about the, 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 the scarcity of the fossil record are actually not fatal to the theory, in other words, they don't destroy his theory. So, overall, I think we still have an established case in favor of the fact that there is no need for a mind, there is no role that a mind or a god or anything like that plays in the facts of biology. Thank you. You're welcome, you're welcome. That is a very nice speech. All right, here comes the, the, the discussion from the discussion from where you I call it the crossfire and I and I actually try to moderate it between you guys. You actually ask each other each other questions. You ask each other questions and you guys you guys reply. You can ask as many questions as you want, but you, it can't go beyond a ten minute a ten minute question or a ten minute discussion. And on the other side also, B uh, B asks a question, uh, and GD asks asks a questions and uh, asks a question ten ten minutes. Yeah. All right, Bill, you are up. Okay, all right. So, um, about the issue of, I didn't say all the um right con the elements needed for the beginning of life based on your um, uh, inorganic claim on the beginning of life uh, is that all the things came up at once. My my claim is so. For example, let's take it that I enter a kitchen and I want to make light soup, and all of a sudden. Or whatever food you understand, all of a sudden the right ingredients in the right proportions come together and then you form the soup. And you say that's an accident. That's the claim I was making. I'm not saying that. Um, I'm obviously aware of the whole uh, development of life and uh, chemical processes of life in Earth and all that. I'm not saying all the elements came up all at once because what like. What I'm saying that how come the right conditions? There are certain right conditions that suggest a sort of fine tuning. For a certain desired result. Okay. Then now the idea of how the DNA is not exact, the coding on DNA is not exactly a language as we know it. Um, I, I made this, I made this statement quite clear that DNA, uh, the coding, the codons and then the base unit of the DNA are not like the human language or the digital coding we know, but they behave in a certain similar way, which is if they are arranged in a particular manner, there is a certain functional result. And I gave the example of the alphabet, the letters of the alphabet. That if they are scrambled up in the right order, they produce a right result. So in that sense, they okay. resemble a language. Yeah, so that was okay. So oh. and then, all right. All right. Ah, so is that a question? I'm not supposed yeah, to answer okay. that. So um, there is okay, so there is a there is this um um calculation. There was this calculation done by um Douglas Axe and Michael Benton. To send the article. And for you to be able to produce um, a, just one functional um, amino acid, sorry, protein uh, by, with the 14 chain amino acids, um, the uh, analysis, uh, the, uh, what's it called? the combinatory analysis suggests that it is 1 to the power 10 over 10 to the power, 1 over 10 to the power 75. That's 
by natural, by random, uh, in a random sense. How would you explain that? How do you explain this huge deficit? That you need to try it 10 to the power 77 times uh, before you can get one functional protein chain. And then this process will have to repeat itself with so much ease as we see now. How do you, how do you address that? Okay. Okay, so I'm just, I'm just going to address it this way. Um, as I explained earlier, there is a certain hypothesis called the RNA world hypothesis. And the RNA world hypothesis tells us that we didn't actually start with proteins or with DNA. We started with RNA. And we know from, from you know, the facts of biology today that RNA itself can behave like protein. So you can have RNA folding in, in specific ways to be, I mean, for example, the ribozymes that we have in our cells um, are mostly RNA, you know, ribosomes and all that. So um, uh, what I'm just trying to say here is that even if it was true, I haven't looked at the article, maybe when you send it to me, I'll look at it, but even if it was true that for you to produce a, a 14 amino acid functional protein would take you 10 to the minus 77 for it to happen, it is not the case. It is not given as a fact that that was how it happened. As a matter of fact, again, I'm going to repeat, the best evidence that we have currently suggests that it was RNA that did the dirty work at the beginning and not proteins. So it was the evolution of RNA that produced what we now call you know, DNA, you know, the double-stranded DNA and all that, and then eventually went on to begin to produce proteins. Now, how this process happened is not well known, but that's what we have currently. Okay, that's understandable. But then the question is that, so, you know, you literally just removed any piece because when the RNA was present, life was happening. It's like saying that um, we are doing machine learning or creating an artificial intelligence and we use say, JavaScript and realize that JavaScript had its deficiencies and we decided to move on to say Python. And switching up to make it better is actually another indication of the design. And then another, I think my before I forget, you wanted to find out the um, you wanted to prove an example of the fossil that the Darwinian position when it comes to the Darwinian execution. In 1909, the Shenzhen discoveries, the Shenzhen fossil discoveries. You could read about them. In your okay. Yeah. I could read, that's, you that's, could that's, maybe send me an article afterwards. So the first is yeah. what, how did they, sorry, I'm not supposed to be asking questions. This is your period, sorry. Uh, continue your, your Yeah, so I, I think I'm okay. I'm okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, my little uh, knowledge of biology it, the plasmids are already existent in the cell, in the cytoplasm of the cell. You understand? So they, they don't insert, and then they actually they don't insert themselves into the what's it called DNA, like you mentioned. So that's actually no, no. I, um, I I didn't say I didn't say. Of course, there there is um you know there's there's the fact of DNA splicing where um you know sections of DNA from a particular um organism can be incorporated into the um, cells into the DNA of the bacterium itself. For example, in the CRISPR-Cas9 system, that's what many bacterium use to incorporate viral genomes, viral DNA into their own genes, for example. Um, and you are right about the fact that plasmids don't always get into, sometimes they do anyway, but they don't always get into the actual main DNA of the bacterium. But the point I was making there is not that plasmids get into the DNA of the, of the bacterium, is that once the genes are transferred, there is a change in gene frequency in you know, certain populations. And that change itself constitutes what we call evolution. So I'm just saying that that's one way that new, new genes, in quotes, can arise in certain organisms. Um, okay, so uh, let, let's easy. Um, let's 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 take the clear base of the whole idea of natural selection, evolution by natural selection. When a new okay. allele is introduced into population, um, what happens is that natural selection, sorry, a new allele of say fitness is introduced into a population. What natural selection basically does is that it directs the rest of the population of a sort based on environmental factors to cause the other um, members of the population to. Uh, get to the place where they attain that level of fitness, that treat, that kind well, of well, 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 sorry, just, just a slight correction. It's not the other members of the population. It's successive generations that get that. Yes, gene, successive that generation. Gets. Yes, so, yes that's, yeah. that's, okay. that's what I'm putting like, because eventually the population, the members of the population, other elements of the population will get 
I think that will that's fine. Um, yeah. The, the question yeah. is that the it looks like what 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 the, what the whole process of natural selection does is like just homing in into an existing uh, genetic makeup. How the how was that genetic makeup in the first place? How did it come up in the first place? These are the very vital questions I'm trying to ask you. That genetic makeup, how did it rise up for the organism to like, this population to be directed towards it? You understand? Yeah. The replicating this is this is yes. This this is still an abiogenetic question. You are asking how how did the how did the first um you know information molecule, if we could call it that, arise? And of course, I'm going to go back to the RNA world hypothesis that I advanced before. Um, it's well known, it's well known from our, our current best science that nucleotides can form in, you know, when you have, you know, just like, for example, in, in experiments that are similar to the miller urey experiments, they have, they have been able to produce nucleotides, you know, like simple nucleotides like adenine, guanine, and all that. And when you have clay soil that's very rich in phosphates and all those things like that, you can have them all being incorporated and bonding in certain ways where they are able to perform both enzyme Once you have RNA, you have a template for which you can evolve and go on to produce something like DNA, which then, you know, continues to produce proteins and you have you have the kind of you know DNA is a more stable information molecule than RNA. We have to admit that. It's a more stable information molecule than RNA. Although there are RNA viruses that survive well, like you know the HIV virus, for example. So but you know this is all still part of the whole idea of natural selection. So the point I'm making here is that um, if you want to ask how the first information molecule developed, it's not entirely difficult to answer that on naturalism. It's not entirely difficult because we know that these nucleotides can form under natural conditions. And we've actually seen it happen experimentally. So it's not at all difficult. Now, we don't know how it did happen, but we have very good explanations for how it could have happened. This was something that happened over 3.8 billion years ago. So it's very difficult to tell. You see, uh, you see uh, the, the RNA in and of itself is quite unstable. And it cannot, it's not capable of all the complexities you just outlined without being dependent on other several factors. The question, the question is, what causes all these external factors to come up at the same time? You see, all these are indications of design based on our everyday observation. How, no, and they, they, like they, said, they're coming up with a Bill, 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 are you, know, Bill, Bill, uh, Bill, I, I want to clarify your position. I want to actually clarify a position with, uh, with GD. Are you asking him that, how could, is, is there any is there any any way or at at the point at the point in the evolution evolutionary journey that uh that ev is an organism or uh, or, or an information uh, a genetic information was irreducible complex like 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 everything actually came together and or and it couldn't have have uh, evolved through time like evolved with time like was there any time is that your question is that the question you're asking him that that every single information actually came together, every single genetic makeup actually came together, and it wasn't like it developed through time. Is there a question? No, 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 no. That's, that's not the position. Um, like so your question, like the question you are asking him, because I, I don't think it actually is, the question is actually clear to GD. I think, I think it feels like to him that, like, you, you're talking about, to me also, the question to me also, actually sounds like, like, you're talking about, a time when every single thing came together, like every single thing came together at once. Like if you're talking about, is Sorry, that, if I mean, do you mind if I? Of course, of course, of course, of course, of course. Yeah. Okay. I think I, I think I, I think I understand what he's trying to say. Now, let me let me see if I can still man his question. Well, he's saying if we look at things like RNA today, for example, maybe RNA in HIV. For that RNA to be able to maybe you know evolve it needs proteins that make it stable that make it you know uh maybe uh that make it to be able to penetrate into some cells that make it be able to um reverse transcribe itself and you know so is is i think what he's asking is if we have rna today that behaves that way rna that is dependent on other factors such as other maybe promoter proteins and things like that 
how is it possible that the earliest forms of RNA did not need that? Like it's, I, I think I don't know if I'm getting. Is this is, is that right. your question, Bill? Okay, even if I say that RNA is the it was the first information molecule or enzymatic molecule, that if we look yeah. at RNA today, even for RNA to function today, there are many there are many things that regulate it. Many things like yeah. um, you know proteins and other things that regulate it that make it actually do what it does today. So you're asking yeah. that, how is it possible that the RNA of that time too came about yeah. and also the, the proteins that regulate it also came about at the same time? Because yeah. for, for the RNA of that time, okay, okay. Is that is that what your question is? Yes, that it seems like it's, even if it's the RNA which was the central um, source of life as you propose, um, it, it, it didn't, uh, function on its own. Other things came into play okay. to sort of streamline it to give it the desired result. Uh -huh. So, okay. how do you explain yeah. that? Yeah, yeah I, I understand that question and it's a good one. And I'd still come back to what I said before. And basically, it's this that RNA was not the only thing that was being developed. In fact, RNA is not the only thing that can be developed under those conditions. Under those conditions, we've seen lipid molecules being developed, we've seen um, nucleotides being developed. We've seen amino acids being developed, both L and R, or oh, sorry, both L and D types of uh, amino acids. I mean, for those who, who know a little bit about, you know, um, I mean, let me just leave that aside. Because what, what we usually find more in current living organisms are the L amino acids. So both L and D amino acids have been found to be naturally occurring in, in a lot of places. Um, also, we have nucleotides, and also we have lipid molecules. All these things can be formed. We even have, um, you, you know, basic, um, basic things like methane, um, ammonia dissolved, and all those things. We found all these things in different places, and the hypothesis is like, okay, for example, in the early Earth, it's hypothesized that there was a lot of um, ammonia. There was a lot of um, CO2 and all those things put together. And if you have, you know, things like, like in the hydrothermal vents, like right on the right there under the ocean, where you have a huge hydrogen gradient, a huge hydrogen ion concentration, which can supply a prodigious amount of energy. You can find these things there. And right there in the bottom of the ocean, some of these things have been found to be naturally occurring. So now. The question will now be, how is it possible that even though they were all there together, how did they, in quotes, know what they were supposed to form and know what they were supposed to do now? That's a separate question, which um, is beyond the scope yeah. of my knowledge at the current time. But all those things were there, or at least we have very good reasons to believe that all those things were okay, there. So let me, let, me, let me actually admit, you know, okay, so let me say, let's say, yes, all the right elements, and how random they are came together and then they produce a certain functional result and a certain positive result that favors evolutionary training. Now the question is, why How? Why does it repeat itself? How does it repeat itself? You see, repetition comes with a certain sort of autonomy and tuning. I don't know if you if you, if you, are, if you agree to that claim. Things will repeat itself if they have been put in a certain mode to repeat it themselves. So for example, um, I, 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 I took, I take a scoop of Milo, I take a scoop of, let's say, Nido, and put it together and form an edible drink. What will make me repeat that process if it is random? I don't know if you get me. It comes with a certain level of underlying consciousness. That's the question. Yeah. Why does, why, after the mutation, uh, why, how do you explain the repetition? I, I understand the question. You um, understand? I think I what, what all the intricacies of, let's yes. say, yes. That once, once they come together, why do they replicate? Why why does replication happen? Now, what, what I'm just going to say here is, yes, um, yes. it may be the case. Now, I'm not I'm not entirely sure on this as well. But what I'm just going to say is this: it may be the case that the ability to replicate is a chemical corollary. It's a chemical, should I say, byproduct of the presence of the presence of long chain, um, maybe. RNA molecules or something like that. And the aim for the molecules, I mean, when I use things like aim or goal or purpose, it makes it sound like there's a mind doing it. And you know, like I told you earlier that sometimes language constrains us to use these kind of things. But I mean, I, I can concede that my language is tethered to that kind of 
understanding. But the point I'm making here is this, that once you have chemical, um, chemical laws, so to speak, chemical, physical laws, I should say, that constrain or that tell a particular molecule how to behave. For example, if you, if you say, if you react a, an acid and a base together, it always produces salt and water. And you're asking, why does it always produce salt and water? How do you associate? Why, why, why is that um, every time you repeat it, 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 it produces that? What I'm just trying to say is that that's just the way it is. That's just the natural way it how is. Do you, how do you associate is that is the same like thing? Loss, how do you associate loss with randomness? You, you see, this no, is when, when, when I say by the right circumstances, and then I, um, they, they repeat themselves in a certain particular manner in a strict sense. Yeah, even though there are some occasions where uh, the, the repetition goes wrong and all that, but then some way, somehow, the success rate is extremely high. How do you accept that? Well, actually, the success rate, the, the success rate is not extremely high in that sense, actually, because the, 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 there's actually a whole lot of mutation going on. What have, in fact, cancer is proof that the, the success rate is not always that high. The reason... Cancer is just, you know, fast mutating and fast replicating cells. Basically, what's going on is that um, there is a lot of correction being done. By There are a lot of correcting molecules that, for example, when DNA replicates itself, these molecules go around and then they check for where there might be potential errors. So they correct a lot of the mutations. You know, where there is a broken gene, they cut out the gene and the gene sews itself back. And all those things happen. All these things are chemical. Is it, um, is it, is it, are, are you aware you are basically there. describing a complex... Um, yeah, yeah, I know. I'm yeah. describing complexity. And, I, and as the, I, told you, I told you before... Something is correcting the error. As all as these things. Yes. Yes. All yes. right, all right, Gide, uh, all right. Like I told you, Gide, like I told Europe, you, Europe. You see, right. I think my my position, my position is that yes, the explanation of the mechanism is brilliant. I agree with the explanation, but the how the the fact that we can we can come up with a comprehensive explanation of the mechanism does not put and sideline the idea of a mind, because we okay. can see clearly that okay, this, so this is, is my, a mechanism. This is my time now. This is my, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Hold on, Bill. This is my time now. So um, I'm going to use the first few seconds to reply to what you just said. Um, my claim is this. Once you have a complete explanation that's completely describable on naturalistic terms, you don't need to add the presupposition of your mind again. You don't need to put that. That's, that's a metaphysical claim that's unscientific on its own. That's just what I'm saying. Now, if I explain... Um, what's it called? If I explain... Uh, what, what was I explaining earlier on? Yeah, I was explaining about how DNA replicates and all that, or sorry, how RNA replicates and all that. If I explain that in terms of natural law, and when I say natural law, I'm not talking about a prescription of how molecules ought to behave. I'm talking about a description of how molecules do behave. For example, if I say F equals MA, force equals mass and acceleration, I'm not saying there's somebody telling force to produce a product of mass and acceleration. I'm saying that whenever you see force, then mass and acceleration are present. That's just the description there. It may be the case that there's some such law, such descriptive law, um, maybe inherent in you know, the, the behavior of molecules that causes it that you know, um, molecules of information of that kind replicate. And uh, I, I don't know that. I, I may need to study that further. But the point I'm making here is that if we have a complete naturalistic explanation, there's no need to add on any um, metaphysical assumption. I yeah. can hear you now. You were saying something like, we don't have a complete naturalistic explanation. Yes, that is, and that is true. And, then, and I'm saying that even if we had a complete naturalistic um, explanation, you see, it's like you have, if, if you are going, let, let me attend to the very first this, this you need, you need to round up so I can ask my questions. Well, I'm actually, I'm actually, I'm okay. I'm just responding to, I, th I think it's a dialogue. I'm just responding to, but like, you can go ahead with your questions. That's okay. Okay. All right. All right. So, um, I'm just going to ask you, do you think intelligence, intelligent design is a scientific hypothesis? Oh, yes. Okay. So, what empirically verifiable predictions has it made? Uh, 
empirically, empirically verifiable example. Can you rep- can you okay, reply your example. question, Jide? Can you like, reply your question? Okay, let me let me clarify the question. Let me give you an example. For example, Darwinism predicted about um there's this there, there was this flower that was shown to Wallace in in I think that um there's this there's this flower in Madagascar a very a, the flower has very deep um you know pollen inside and most of the moths around they could not reach into where the pollen is so Darwin predicted that there was going to be a moth that had a very long proboscis that nobody had seen before then. And so that we predicted, based on his theory, that there was going to be that moth that had that very long proboscis that would be able to reach into that flower. And he predicted that based on his theory, because his theory predicted that you can have what we call co-evolution. That's two organisms that evolve together, so to speak. This is usually found when you, when you have something like um, mutualism and all that. So 20 years later, this was confirmed. The, we, okay, the, I, I get you. I get the, you. The model yeah, I get you. So I'm asking, what kind of what what does does okay. intelligent design have anything like that? Okay. Sure. So the intelligent design component, obviously, and um, they're just notion of um, the junk DNA, and then um, the initial new the new Darwinian position was that junk DNA was just junk DNA, it had no use. It's one of these obsolete byproducts of random natural um, selection and mutation. And it turns out that apparently the so-called junk DNA have a way of regulating, as predicted by intelligent design proponents, regulating the whole attachment of the RNA polymerase to the DNA strand in a nucleus. You understand? So that is one clear example. You can look it up. You see? So, yeah, that's okay. one empirical, empirically verifiable claim by the intelligent design proponents. Yes. Uh, but um, if I if I understand correctly, the issue of non-coding DNA or junk DNA, I mean, no matter the terminology you want to use for that, the the issue of junk DNA um, was not that it could have no function. It was impossible for it to have no function. The issue of junk DNA is that it had no apparent function. I think that was what was being said by standard scientists of the time. Yeah, and and the also, is, most not the friends... also. Also, also not sorry, sorry. Also, not all non-coding DNA have regulatory functions. Most non-coding DNA actually still don't have detected function. Only a fraction of them have been known to perform regulatory functions. Do you agree? I mean, is that true? It doesn't dismiss the fact that there was a prediction. So, is it because the position of the Darwin position, like other, like you mentioned, there are vestigial components that seem like uh, or could. Uh, Hello, can yeah. you hear me? Yeah, B, can, can you hear us? B, you. See, B, B design proponents uh, say that. Okay. Yes, can you hear me? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. can you hear me? Sorry, yeah. guys, later. So, okay, but apart from that, what other, because Darwin has, Darwinian theory has made a prodigious amount of, um, of predictions. So, what other predictions has he made? Has, Okay, okay so well, let me let me let, let me just sorry sorry let me leave that let me leave that one aside let me leave that one aside. Um, have you seen this okay. documentary video on the legal debate about intelligent design in, that happened in Dover in two thousand and five? Have you have you seen the video about it? Have you anything so? Okay, okay, all right. Well, I wanted to ask a question about that video because in that video, the court was able to establish beyond reasonable doubt that intelligent design advocates. Had actually taken creationism and they had changed it and modified it a little bit to make intelligent design look like a scientific hypothesis. And in the legal, in a, in the legal setting, in the court case, even though the court said that it is true that Darwinian theory is not complete, that it is also very obvious that intelligent design is not a scientific hypothesis; it's a religious hypothesis. That the same, the that same was said. The same was said when Hubble, when Hubble. Okay, so I was saying that the same was said to in the in pages. It's not far fetched. Um, when the when postulates started coming up that the universe had a beginning, the same argument was put across that the boring theological concept from the Bible that in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth and all that. Until the, we, had, we had this whole CMB work by I am and Wilson, well, actually, uh, actually, Hubble's that's actually truth. that's not true. That that's sorry, sorry, no, that's not true because that's not actually true. that's not true. What is not true? Hold on, hold on. I'll, 
I'll clarify. What's not what's not true there is that scientists that when when um, Einstein discovered that you know the universe is expanding and all that, and then Georges Lemaitre said that uh, I mean yes. if you extrapolate back, it means that the universe must have converged at you know a point in the finite finite past where it's radiated from, so to speak. Um, and then scientists now responded by saying, "Oh, he's trying to be religious or something like that." Actually, I I don't think that's true. I mean, you you may maybe bring sources that actually confirm that. But as far as I'm concerned, I've not seen, I've never seen anything like that before. As a matter of fact, what I know is that it was the Pope that was telling Lemaitre at that time that, hey, this looks like something that we can use for the Bible. And Lemaitre said, no, 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 no. This is science. This is not religion. I mean, he wrote a letter to the Pope and said something like that. That's all I know. Now, you may bring sources. Um, I I don't see how what you just said. I don't see how what you just said actually... uh, I think yeah, he's, he's talking. At, he's talking about. He's talking about the beginning and the end. Like in if the universe at the beginning and, and I think he's clarifying that. Yeah. yeah the point. So the I'm point saying that was um, is, there, was point, a, there was the point. There was an existent position. There was a position that the universe has always been with this whole steady state theorem and all that before the Big Bang. Uh, there was a position in the scientific community, in the academic community, that the universe has sort of always been. It has been a loop of existence until so, um, we have. Yes, we that, have was, that was prior. That was prior to. That was prior to. That was prior to um, Edwin Hubble's discovery, right? Yeah, Hubble's discovery of yes, and and even with the okay, Penzias yeah. discovery of the cosmic microwave background and all that. So I'm saying that yes, if, when those developments started coming up, the, in the, uh, there was there were claims in the scientific community that people were borrowing religious ideas to make it scientific, until the science was proved. Proven, you understand. Okay. That, and first, even first of all, whole, yeah. First of all, yes. hold on. First of all, um, you need to provide sources for that. I've never seen that before. You might be right. I'm, I'm not sure. But secondly, more and more crucially, that was just an opinion. So that's what exactly that wasn't that, the, that wasn't, the scientific community said it was a religious yeah, claim. Yeah, that the scientific that scientists said that oh that the, the reason why they are saying that this points to the beginning of the universe is because they want to be religious. I would like to see sources of that. Sure. Then now, can can that I'll do that but more crucially, no problem. But more crucially, whatever it is that they were saying then was not decided in a court of law. I'm talking about this one. This one was decided in a court of law. The the both sides, Michael Behe and everyone, they came and they presented their testimony and they gave their hypothesis. Even Christian scientists were there who defended evolution by natural selection, and the courts decided. In fact, there was a particular embarrassing document where it was shown clearly that they had edited the documents from creationism to show intelligent design. And they made a mistake where they left the C and the ism at the back of the intelligent design. So which, of course, was another good line of evidence that they were just trying to modify intelligent design. So this was confirmed in a court of law. And that's it's not the same as no. I, I don't see how a confirmation, a legal conclusion, a legal conclusion disputes a scientific um, projections. I'm I'm actually confused. No, the, the, the legal the legal conclusion does not it does not the court did not say that um you know the, the what the court did was that both sides presented their case they presented their facts the intelligence design intelligent design people presented their facts. The evolution people presented their facts, and at the end, the court was able to look at the evidence that both sides presented and said definitively that not only was intelligent design not a scientific hypothesis, but it was actually creationism that religion disguised as science. So it was a fraud. It was a farce. All right, all right, guys. We are not. We are not. We are not guys, 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 keep it a bit. Keep it a bit. We are not talking about history yet. We are talking about we are talking about or or, or what actually happened in, in the US. We're talking about your question to 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 uh, Bill and why you think why you think uh, it, uh, intelligent design is just a modified a modified creationism. I don't think Bill Bill would actually yeah, say yeah. That's what that's what I'm saying. Yeah 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 yeah. I, I don't think Bill would still modify creationism position. No, no. I, I, uh, 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 but uh, well, my that, point is, a court of law, a court of law actually, a court of law actually decided that they looked at the evidence and they showed. And, I, and that's, without, that, that wouldn't help our scientific discussion, would it? A court of law's no, no, position no, not, on whether. No, don't get me wrong. I'm not. I'm not saying. Hold on. I'm not saying that whatever the court of law says is true. I'm saying that we have. 
a case wherein it was decided beyond reasonable doubt, it was established beyond reasonable doubt, that intelligent design was creationism disguised as science. So I'm asking, do you agree with that court case or not? But well, you said you've not watched the video, you've not seen the documentary, so maybe I'll just wait until you see yeah, and I, I don't, I don't agree. I don't agree with that, that if creationism is a modi sorry, intelligent design is a modified science of creationism. No. All right. Because there are... Um, all right. Um, fine. So, um... All right, fine. So, uh, I, I, think, I think I'm okay with... Uh, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. You guys um, use... You guys use... So, let me just ask this. Let me just... Okay, maybe ask your final question. Ask your last question. Uh, Jide, you can go okay. on. Okay. Uh, yeah. I have a number of... Yeah, I have a number of questions here. There's one that is particularly long, but I think I'll just cut that off. Mm. I won't ask that one. Mm. So, um, let me just ask Bill this. Do you think a gap in Darwinism, to, like maybe there's a gap, there's something that Darwinism does not explain. Do you think that counts as evidence for intelligent design? Or, sorry, therefore, that counts as evidence for why? Do you, do you agree with that logic? Um, it's, a, it's, it's a very dicey. So, Darwinism, but where you mean uh, evolution by natural selection? What is actually asking is that? What, yes. what, let me clarify this question. What, what you're actually uh, asking is that, uh, uh, do, does, does in, uh, intelligent design come in by default? If Darwinism or the, the Darwin's theory of evolution can't explain some gap in uh, uh, science inquiry about or science knowledge about about evolution. Okay, I, I get it clearly. All right, sure. So, um, in that's I say, it's, it's a very, it's it, that would be like putting in the god of the gaps theory. You know? uh, I like the fact that Darwinism is able to explain the processes, but to me, the explanation of the mechanism does not put away the mind. You understand. And then, um, what basically the intelligent design position or some of these people are theistic evolutionists, so let me put it that way, is that God used the process of evolution as explained by Darwin to an extent to get to the expected end you want. So to me, if there's a gap yeah, in but, the theory but, of, but then, yeah. but then, but then that would not be, that would not be a scientific hypothesis anymore. God would not be a scientific hypothesis anymore. God would just be a metaphysical add-on to the scientific explanation for the diversity of life, right? And that does not affect the science. That's one thing we always fail to realize. Like, when we are trying to yeah. split, so, the, um, what, what I'm saying in, is um, this, hold on, okay. what I'm saying is, sorry, sorry, I'm interrupting you. I agree, I agree that it doesn't affect the science. But what I'm saying is that, that doesn't mean the science of Darwinism is false. I mean, just the, the fact that Darwinism can't explain something does not itself prove that intelligent design intelligent design is the correct theory. I mean, you are saying what you are saying now. Basically, what you just said is that evolution does not contradict intelligent design. Is that what you are saying? Yes, yes. The evolution, evolution, micro evolution. Let me put it that way: micro evolution. Okay. All right. No, all, yes. Small all right. Evolution. Yes. All right, all right. Do you have? To, let, let me clarify this. Let me clarify this. Let me clarify this. Your, your, your point is that micro evolution actually happens, but but or or but uh, not macro evolution. Or is that your point? Yes, that's okay. if the evolution we are talking about is by random random mutations and then natural selection. Yes, that's that's my position. All right. That, that all right. Evolution. Let Let me give you an let me give you an example. Let me clarify that position. Like, so, let, let hold me, on, hold like, on, hold like, on. What's it? Sorry, sorry. Hold on, no, hold on. Um, moderator, please. Let me, let me just comment okay. on this. What do you? What's your definition of micro and macro evolution? What's the difference between the both of them? Okay, so let me give me these examples to explain. So let's use the Darwinian pinches. Uh, that in a certain season they develop uh, such structures. They are big um, ex uh, elongate to facilitate their feeding. Uh, endeavors in other seasons it shrinks okay. and then there's mutation hello bill oh, not again uh, bill and then there's a genetic mechanism um, to make them adapt not we again. can get uh, a human being traced out from a sample, something like a sponge that's that's my position on macroevolution that we can have something as complex as a human structure coming traced down from 
um, uh, Jay, we say that the, the human came from something as unicellular as a sponge. That's my position. That, 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 that doesn't explain that. Doesn't explain that. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. Okay. Yes. So what, what, you're, what you're saying, what you're saying, if I can get you correctly, because I didn't hear some part of that because of, I think maybe network or something. But what you're saying is that macroevolution can explain how one finch species can change into another finch species, right? Yes. Yes. That's my that's microevolution. Macroevolution is when let me let me just there's a jump from the phylum this way. Where okay, when there's a jump in phylum. Okay, so then here's yes. the question. Here's the here's the question I'm gonna ask. Yeah. What's the basis for claiming that a species can be created from two from like one two species can be created from one species like they can evolve it they can evolve into two species but two phyla cannot be created from one phylum or two i mean that's i'm just using okay. that so if i'm getting a question right, a sort of, uh, um that is, so what i'm trying to say is that what makes me think that if speciation can happen then phylum jump cannot happen that's what you're asking right yeah 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 so it's like this speciation we usually, if, if, if you don't, in a taxonomy, taxonomy, taxonomy scale, okay, species, species mm-hmm. comes, is, 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 is less, the least on the scale, then phyla is about. Okay. If the phenomenon is happening at the upper scale, then we know that then it can trickle down to the lower scale. But this is a, a sort of, say, logically, it's uh, an anabolic um, argument you are trying to make that. Because that's happened at the micro level, then we can extrapolate it to the macro level, which that which is not consistent for me. You understand? Okay, okay, okay. All right. Let me let me ask it. Let me ask it this way. Um. So you agree that um, hyenas? Sorry. Um. What do you call them? Right. Wolves. If it's, and okay. Dogs. If it has happened on this wolves, wolves, like then it can happen on the lower scale. Okay. Hold on. So. What exactly is the difference between? Because the way you are saying this, you know, I mean, you know, we have kingdom, phylum, class, other family, yeah. genus, species, and all that. So you are saying yeah, it's yeah. possible from one species, from sorry, it's possible for two species to be created from one species, but it's not possible for two genera to be created from one genera. So basically, what you are saying now is that it is possible for humans and Neanderthals to have evolved from Homo erectus. But it is not possible for chimpanzees and gorillas to have evolved from maybe Perilapithecus or something like that. Is that what you're saying? It is not what come again, the last part. Okay, let, let me let me let me say it again. Humans and Neanderthals are both separate mm-hmm. species, different species within the same genus, the genus Homo. Do you agree with that? Uh, he's asking you a question, Bill. Hello, Bill. He's asking you a question. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, we can. Yeah, hello, hear can you hear me? Yeah, we okay. can hear you. He's so, asking you a question. Okay, okay, okay. Let me let me repeat. Let me let me repeat the question in another way, just to make it clear. Um, humans and Homo neanderthals, Homo neanderthalensis, Homo sapiens and Homo neanderthalensis, both can evolve from. Homo erectus. Do you agree with that? No. Wow. Wow. That I mean, is... it, but wait. You just agreed. You just agreed. You just agreed that speciation no. is possible. You see, speciation, speciation. So the concept of speciation. So, for example, and um, we know a dog is a particular animal species, right? Um, yes. Uh, human being is a different animal species. Right. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Homo sapiens. Yes. I can hear you loud and clear. Yes. Carry on. Homo sapiens and then whatever other animal you would like to consider. The species are different. But All right. the jump, my yeah, issue is evol- evolution can't, the concept as we have it now cannot help us to explain the jump from a dog to a human being. But, but the species I'm talking about is not, a, a, an upgrade of the I'm, species. So for example, um, I'm not, humans I'm not now, disputing that. Human, I'm not disputing that. I'm not disputing that. 
I'm not yes. disputing that. And humans. So what I'm saying is this. Yeah. What I'm saying is this. Okay. you said you said let me let me clarify. You said you said that speciation is possible, right? By so speciation, I mean that means it happens in a particular. Come again. Okay, you said speciation is possible, right? Yeah. Okay, sorry. Sorry, moderator. Hope I've not used above my time because I don't want to be on You have, but it seems like you guys, both you guys are actually okay, doing the talk. Please. So, so I'll give okay, you this, la, la, this okay, last question. Right, okay, let's just, okay. Okay, all right. All right, let's just carry on and just have a discussion because I even I was even going to seed my second rebuttal for a discussion anyway, but that's up to him. So, um, 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 as I was asking, we have the genus Homo. Do you agree that there's a genus Homo? There's a what? Genus Homo. You, there's, yes. a, there's a genus Homo. Oh, okay. Yes. yes let's yes. let's use let's use the let's use cats for example. Uh, I I don't know the but let me see if I yes. quickly Google out the biological name of cats, the genus. Okay. So we have the we have the genus Canis. Canis is dogs anyway. I don't want to use dogs. I want to use cats because cats are more familiar. So um. And there are Hold on. Okay, okay, okay. Well, they're in the they're in the class. They're in the class mammalia anyway. That's basic. So let me just quickly check this out. Okay, so but you believe that all cats belong in the same genus, right? All class. Hello. Hello. All cats. 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 Yes. 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 Okay. So the domestic cat, for example, is a cat, right? Uh huh. Yes. The the lion is a cat. Yes. The tiger is a cat. Yes. Okay. So um all of them belong in the same class. They are yes. all different species of the same class. I'm trying yes. to get the proper taxonomic term to use here. So all of them belong in the same class. You agree with that, yes. right? Yes. So they are just they are just Different species of the class Felidae. Yeah, exactly. Sorry, the the family family Felidae. That's the family. That's the family of Felids, where cats are. Yeah. So all the cats are in that family. Do you agree with that? Okay. Yes, okay. So now, what you are saying is, what you are saying is that all those cats within that family can evolve into each other because. They are just different species no, I'm not of the same that. genus. No, okay, I'm so not saying, saying that. So what are you saying? Hello. Because you you agree. I'm saying at that species level. Hello, at, at, hello, Bill. Okay, uh, you said uh, yeah. You, you said Bill. You said, let uh, me finish your you. finish your. Let me, let me. I think let me, let me. I have to define. Let me define what I mean for clear. Let me define my position clearly. Before you go ahead with the question, so I'm saying that. So we know okay, species right. are uh, reproductive, uh, reproductive viable um, organism. So if um, I can cross with another organism that can produce fertile offspring, we are species, right? Yes. Okay. So my position is that the Darwinian, the Darwinian theory of evolution by natural selection, does not um, permit me, Bill, to um, Move from being uh, the human species, like crossing with other another human being uh, to produce, or let me take the whole human population. Does not move us from being able to uh, cross breed among ourselves to be able to cross breed with, let's say, uh, which other higher? No, there's no higher. Let me say, let me take the um, the chimpanzee. The, if Darwinism cannot yeah, bring us, we can't. To the we can't. A chimpanzee. A chimpanzee. To be able to cross with a human being to produce a, a fertile offspring. Yeah, yeah, that is yes, yeah, that, that is intervention. That, that is impossible. That not, you know, that is impossible. That's because like the, the, like, the reason. Uh, so, uh, hey guys, guys. Uh, oh, hello. Yeah, 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 yeah. Please, I know. Let me just let me just respond. You, okay. you know, you've given me time, so let me just okay. respond okay. to what okay. you said last. The reason why humans cannot successfully meet with chimpanzees is because we belong. Not just in different species, but in different genera, in different genuses, if I could put it that way. We belong in the genus Homo, and they belong in the genus Pan. 
So in the genus pan, there's pan troglodytes, which is a regular, um, regular chimpanzee, and there's pan paniscus, which is the pygmy chimpanzee. So, or what the pygmy chimpanzee is also called bonobos. So you have chimpanzees and you have bonobos in that genus. In our own genus, we had Homo erectus, Homo neanderthalensis, Homo ergaster, Homo erectus. Um, homo habilis and all those other homo, 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 homo. Those were the ones in our genus. Now, we were all in the same genus, but we had different species. As a matter of fact, evidence has shown that humans and Neanderthals at one time, um, they reproduced and they had fertile offspring. Because if you check the white people nowadays, um, about 4% of their genes came from Neanderthals. About 4 to 8%, that's the estimate, came from Neanderthals. So that the already shows that the it's possible for... Yeah, B, you say something. Yeah? B, you say can something. Hear? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, clarify your position. Yeah. Yeah, I'm saying that what GJ just said, um, like, the words of, like, the British paleontologist, Stephen Jungu, who disputes the fact that uh, there was a possible cross breeding between the underdogs and human beings produced with Alex. You can check that out. Okay, you, B, what, is, what, uh, yeah, what, what do you mean? Jaden, Jaden, please let me clarify this what question. B, B, let me clarify, uh, Jaden, let okay. me clarify this question. B, are you saying there are no, okay. uh, is your point that like these appeal to, appeal to authority, like these authority, authority you actually, you are citing, are you saying this authority is claiming that there are no, hello, uh, uh, hello, uh, hello, can you hear me? Bill. Yes, I can hear you, please go ahead. This authority you, you are, you are citing, are you saying it is, the authorities is actually disputing the claim that that there are surviving Yarados gene among Caucasians. Are you saying that? Is that what you're implying? No. Okay. I, I'm, I'm not saying... Uh, like, uh, are you saying Yarados never uh, meted with... The, the issue with, is that, oh, that oh, the, 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 the genetic tool, the genetic tool to, for example, the current, the other explanation to that, the genetic tool is not only with the species. So for example, if I find a um, trait of and the Neanderthalian um, uh, marker in your genome, it's because we are in a huge pool. The taxonomic pool is very huge. Th that's why, even that's why Darwinism holds in the first place that there are similar structures, even though the um, um, organisms do not belong necessarily in the same uh, strata of the taxonomy. You understand? So, the fact that it, it only explains that, yeah, we may have a common ancestor from which all other things were built, but it does not mean that. Um, because we find uh, the genome of uh, Neanderthal in you, there was a time where human beings, uh, sorry, Homo sapiens and Homo Neanderthals crossed bread and they produced fertile um, offspring. Do you understand me? All no, right. All right. That's, all right. That's, that's all not right. the point. That's not the Jay point. Don't it's, already, it's already established. It's already established. It's already established that humans and Neanderthals share over 99% of their genes. That's already established. What they were talking about are. Uh, um, I think, if I can remember correctly, they were talking about haplogroups. Haplogroups are, oh, sorry, haplotypes. Um, haplogroups are a group of haplotypes. Haplotypes are genes that are carried specifically on sex cells. And they cross, they, they check, they cross check the haplotypes that um, are found in, what do you call them? In, in white people, in Caucasians, basically. And they saw that these haplotypes, about 4% of these haplotypes, or 4 to 8% of these haplotypes, are actually present in Neanderthals as well. As a matter of fact, those haplotypes could only have come through sex. It wasn't something that came through natural selection. So that are was you the issue. Sure and you about that? Are been, you been, Well, I mean, you could, you could go look it up. We could, we could look it up. All right, all right, guys. All right, guys. For all the listeners... Because, for, okay, okay, all right, guys. Please, please cool it down. For all the Taking listeners, that only uh, bail, 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 that is it. That, that is it for today. You know, like I have to actually clarify the, the time and, and you know, resisted far more than the time we actually planned for. But for anyone actually listening yeah, to this, you should sure. actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. You should actually, uh, anything that, was, any claim that was made in the video or in, in the, in the debate, you should, you should actually check it out. Like look it up, you know, to verify the claims before you come to a, to a conclusion. I, I, I couldn't actually, I personally could have actually commented or actually taken a side, but you know, like actually correct some things, but I'm not, I'm not the one debating right here. But so I'm advising anyone listening to this to actually very verify all the claims, both on GD side, uh, side and, and base side. You should very verify the claim. I have two questions for you, like, you know, two questions for both guys, you know, like, I have two questions for you guys. Uh, okay. yeah, yeah, Bill, all like, right. you know, no one is actually asking you guys any questions. So I'm, I'll be the one asking the question. Bill. 
What is your best evidence for? Yes, intelli- yes, I can hear you. Okay, what is your best evidence for intelligent design? Okay. Um, so the first one is the functional um, sequencing of protein, how protein protein formation, which is the basic form of life. How these parts, small minute parts, come up in a certain intricate repetitive function to produce results. That is one. The second is um, the whole idea of uh, the uh, Cambrian explosion that sort of, let me put it this way, that affirms that the time given for the Darwinian process to happen to give us new life forms is actually not possible. So these are my two main highlights. The basic unit of life itself and then the explanation or the events that happen that sort of defeats Darwin's position on uh, the formation of new life forms. So, so does this imply that we never evolved or, or something like that? That we never evolved from from uh, a simple life form like mox or or like like you know like from a simple life form. Hello, does, come again. Does this imply? Does this position you actually holding imply that we ne- we never we must never evolved from uh from uh a simple life form like you know like 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 we never evolved from a simple life form? Does it imply that? I I I'm, I. Um, okay, so for, with the current Darwinian explanation and scientific explanation, that claim is a huge burden on its neck until another scientific explanation comes because straight of evidences show that something of a sort of a common ancestry is. That's the position I'm gray on, you understand? Okay, but, you say it's... Uh, okay, all right, all right, all right. All right, all right, all right. Yeah, yeah. you get me? Yeah, I got you. Uh, yeah. my my point, my, my question for you is that my question for you is that my question for you is that uh, uh-huh. like does it, like you said till a different explanation comes up, and I think this was a question Jaden actually asked him asked you the other time, like does the gap in scientific inquiry explain your position because you actually said just now that until a better information comes up, a better explanation comes up. Darwin, Darwin evolution doesn't add up. Do, I'm not asking you, does the gap, like a question, a question GD asked you before, mm-hmm. does the gap in scientific inquiry, is, is, is a gap in scientific inquiry an evidence for intelligent design? Because you said, you said your best explanation. No, then that, that would defeat the whole idea that intelligent design is quite scientific. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But now, um, the question yes. I actually so, asked you. So I'm not talking about it. All right. Gap, you, you cited, yes. you cited, a question. You, you started uh, an explanation like your evidence, like the pre-Cambrian explosion or all the Cambrian explosion, like you know, like the Cambrian explosion of life. You said it's never. You, you said uh, uh, Darwin evolution doesn't explain the timeline uh, uh, and the and the Cambrian explosion. Uh, uh, you said that for for you, I don't know, I don't know about, much about the Cambrian explosion. I think it's something about the evolution of worms and stuff like that, Bosha. But but. Uh, uh, it doesn't explain the Darwin expl- uh, evolution doesn't explain explain that, but that seems to me like it, it, just, it is just a gap, and it is just a gap in, in our knowledge because because if Darwin doesn't explain that, that doesn't actually mean your position is actually real. Bill, you're not you're not answering me. Hello, hello, yeah. Do you, you go? Yeah, back. The, yeah. The, the the light keeps dropping, so I'm saying that okay. So the Darwin's position is that. Yes, um, there is the, there is a mechanism for life, and that I agree that the mechanism explains simple variations in species. Okay, but when it comes to the whole um, notion of new organism formation, the Darwinism Darwinism does not do justice to it for me. That is all I am saying, and that because Darwinism is not in the position to define that we cannot. We cannot say that, okay, we cannot fully embrace Darwinism on the scale that everything was created by, or came up by, so, so sorry to use the word created, came up by blind evolutionary forces. You understand me? Okay. Because there is a defect in the theory itself, so we cannot embrace its its core, that everything, all of life, is as a result or the product of a blind evolutionary mechanism. And then the alternate for that is intelligent design. If there is no blind evolutionary mechanism, it's intelligent design. All right. So, on, so that gap is, you understand? Yes. All right. One, one, one last question. 
Is there any proof, anything, anything that can actually change your mind on your position on intelligent design that we never evolved intelligently? Is there any proof that what that that Jay Don can cite that any science any science scientist can actually cite that can change your mind on what or on your position on intelligent design? Is there anything that Jay Don can actually oh, say? Oh yes, I have, I have, I have already. Yeah, what kind of proof would you require to actually move you from? I can change my of... mind about that. All right, all that right. can explain everything. All right, okay, all right. Is there any proof that uh, general can actually cite that will change your mind on your, on your position? That what kind of proof do you think he has? He has to yeah, if he's, if he's able to um, evaluate like the, the whole, yeah. So how can you explain the functional sequencing of amino acids by blind forces with the time giving? With the whole odds that the numerical odds um, justify the mathematics, oh, and then that has not been done yet. See? All right, you are uh, asking for an, you, are, you are asking for an explanation of uh, uh, you are you are asking for you are you are asking for an explanation of life. You know, like an explanation for how life arose. You are not talking about how the complex structure actually evolved. You are asking for an explanation. Of how life are are, are, are rules on it. Are you are are rules? Your... Yes, that's one. Yeah, yes. yeah. That has never been like a, a suitable explanation for that. Like, you know, that, that's still a mystery. But they are actually working on that. I don't think Jadon has an explanation or or, or has a, an answer to that. It is just a mystery for now. So, how does this prove your position that it was God? Bill, how does okay. how so does like I, this, I said with the first, how does yes. this lack of explanation prove that it was God? Okay, so uh, the first thing I said when I started making when in my introductory statement was I pleaded uh, to the design intuition we all have. Can you hear me? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can hear you. Sure. All right. That when I enter a room, for example, and I see that um, my bed has been laid, there is food in the on the on the stool. The fridge is on. The fan is moving. I know, obviously, that the fact that these pieces have come together to produce a certain um, functional result is a trait of design. It's something we all observe in everyday life, unless you want to deny that. All if right. I see a phone, uh, yeah, all uh, right. I, I can quickly know that, okay, so this is a complex that has a set, produced a certain desirable outcome, and therefore it's attributed to a mind. It's our everyday life. The only Think that flaw that flaw, flaw, flaws this claim and this thing we all observe is the Darwinian position of evolution by natural selection. Oh, and right. until we can assert that design intuition into the claim of Darwin, I'm, I'm not sure my position will change. Uh, 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 uh one more question. Well, one more, one more question. What if we can actually explain uh, our, our a natural our natural propensity towards seeing everything as designed you know you know our natural propensity seeing everything as designed like you know like our natural our natural our natural ability to actually or our natural desire to actually see or, or, or observe purpose behind everything if that can be explained does that mean your your position on evolution would actually be uh, will, uh, will actually be ducted or or will you withdraw your position of evolution on evolution? Like if you can actually explain why you why you can actually see why you can actually see a fan in your room and you, with, with with the sudden feeling that it was actually moving okay, by accident, the, by a bit of accident, like something like that. If you can actually explain something like that without without your yes, I will, I will embrace it. All That's, right, yeah. all right, all right, yeah, all right. Uh, Jadon, you're up. Like this, this is a question for you, Jadon. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you loud and clear. Yes, loud and clear. Yeah, yeah. Is that yeah? Is there any proof that that Bill can actually cite that will change your mind on your position? Well, I don't know. I mean, um, all the evidence currently seems to point in the direction that things, if not definitively, have come by natural processes, could have come. By natural processes. I think the first thing he would have to do, which I have to repeat, he never actually addressed this in my from my opening statement, is he has to prove that idealism is probably true. I, again, idealism is the position that mental mental states have ontological priority over um, physical states. Or in other words, mind is what produces matter. 
and not matter producing mind. In other words, he has to first prove that there's something like a mind that exists apart from matter. I think that's the very first thing he has to do. And then he has to then go on to show how exactly this mind could have produced. This is not just enough to say it could have been a mind. It could have been a mind. Okay, we need a scientific detail because when we say it is evolution, we actually give an explanation of how evolution works. Okay, evolution works this way. It's, it works by random mutation and natural selection. And when you put those together, it's enough to at least account for most, if not all, of what we have seen so far. And there's nothing to, there's no reason for us to believe that it can't account for the other things. Um, so we, we would need the same explanation for intelligent intelligent design to oh. say, okay, you know what? Yeah, this this whole process of evolution is there, but it needs a mind for it to produce what it is producing. So um, I think um, unless that can be done, unless it can, you can give a plausible account of intelligent design that doesn't add unwarranted metaphysical pro uh, propositions to the observations of evolution that we have, then I don't think we can have any solid case for intelligent design. All right, all right. I, I, I think the our, our time is up now. Like, like if you if you're listening to these and and you're actually you actually have more questions, you can actually direct direct it to them on on the social media page. Like, you know, like uploading. But, these but, but there's a question here. I think I, I I think I want to answer someone, and I think I think I should. Right. Someone asked a question here. The person said, the person's name is Easy. He said, "How justifiable is the assumption or the fact? Even the fact anyway. How justifiable is the assumption that?" RNA was developed abiogenetically. Is it plausible to assert that just exactly the right amount of raw materials came together at the right time and in the right place to form an RNA molecule without any driving force and reoccurred with remarkable frequency? I think I already answered this when Bill asked it earlier. That um, um, when you ask how justifiable is it, in other words, what we're asking is, do we actually have evidence that this can happen? Yes, we have some evidence. It's not definitive evidence. It's not conclusive evidence. But we have some evidence in that direction. We have some evidence in that direction. I could maybe share some other materials with you. If you maybe reach out to me on my social media, on my Twitter specifically, which is the same, Jadon225. Yeah, I mean, just reach out to me on, so we could discuss that personally. But the, the, the prima facie answer to this is that, is it, can we, can we, in other words, is it plausible? Is it possible to justify this position? And I'm going to say an affirmative yes to that. Now, that's a separate question for saying, have we justified it? Now, that's one I can say, no, we haven't justified it definitively. We have some evidence in that direction, but it's not conclusive evidence, but we have some evidence in that direction. On the other hand, intelligent, intelligent design has not made any progress so far. We, but we've not been able to base any scientific, um, any major scientific predictions or any pragmatic solutions on intelligent design. We've used evolution, for example, to develop new antibiotics, to develop new vaccines, to even determine statewide policies for countries on how to preserve the environment, how extinction can happen and all that. Intelligent design has not been able to produce even one of something that's like this. So um, I think it's, I mean, Darwinism I think, I think is clearly the superior theory. We're separating, yeah. we separating things here a little. All right, um, all right, all right, all right. Intelligent right. design. Uh, uh, Bill, no, you should no, actually... No, let him talk now. Let him talk. I won't, re okay, I won't okay. respond. Let, let, let him just so have his say. Okay. Intelligent okay. design to um, 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 people who are sick to intelligent design. I... Uh, is that we can all observe it. The evidence is clear, and it's out of that that we make all this, uh, all these, put up these scientific uh, applications you are talking about. But on the scale of macro evolution, I want you, if there is a practical scientific application you have done out of that piece, then you can bring that up. Okay. But when it comes to the issue of micro evolution, evolutionary biologists and people of uh, uh, intelligent design who are evolutionary biologists agree on the same thing. Um to achieve uh, has a sort of agent that makes it happen okay now that is that everyday experience we don't observe in our everyday life complex things that produce uh, sort of functional or meaningful outcomes come up by accident so uh, that's my position until we're able to explain the whole 
what we observe and design intuition that parts come together to produce a successful outcome in our everyday life by accident. Then um, we can all agree that yes, um, there is no need for an external agent to cause the processes, the biological processes of life. As we Thank you. All right, all right. Uh, come in, Jide, your your closing statement in just three minutes, please. Three minutes. Okay. All right. So um, I have actually presented four arguments so far today. Um, my first argument was against the notion of idealism. In other words, the the notion of the idea that a mind can exist apart from matter. As far as I'm concerned, Bill did not respond to this at all. So I would say that that point remains unrefuted. Um, the second argument I made was that mutation and selection are sufficient to account for everything that we or um you know, observe in biology. Bill tried to refute this by citing mathematics, by citing some kind of improbability, by citing things like the camera and explosion and all that. And I think I've I've done my job in showing that these things are not they're not defeaters for what I said. Um, he also talked about the my argument for weak design. And this design doesn't point to a super intelligence or omnipotence, omniscience, omnibenevolence, or whatever. And then he he raised <clears throat> the issue that. I can't know what good design is, but that contradicts his point where he says that we have what he called design intuition. I don't think it's plausible because if he can assert that we have design intuition, then I don't think he can deny that we can also have good design intuition. In other words, the intuition that recognizes good design. And if we have good design intuition, then it follows logically that we can also have bad design intuition uh, because all it takes for you to recognize good design no, sorry, all it takes for you to recognize bad design is for you to see a design that is lacking goodness. In other words, that's lacking quality in a sense. So I think his point against weak design, his argument against weak design actually refutes itself. He, he contradicts his own position. Then we went back and forth on the issue of abiogenesis. And I think I've justified most, I've tried to justify the RNA world hypothesis, which I've put forward, um, that is plausible. His incredulity is around the fact that all of these you know, bumbling sea of chemicals back then would have come together to form what we now, you know, what started off the entire process of evolution. It expresses incredulity about this. And I also admit that there is a whole lot of knowledge, there's a whole lot of gap in that knowledge. However, that does not in any way constitute evidence that it was a mind that did it. The fact that we don't know the truth of X does not prove the truth of Y in this context and i've also tried to present some rebuttals for his position um uh, particularly the, his position on microevolution and macroevolution i think it's a false dichotomy i think it's a false distinction i don't think such dichotomy should even exist as i defined in fact I, if i could say it very clearly dividing evolution into microevolution and macroevolution is a straw man of my position because i did not establish micro and macroevolution when i started i only defined evolution as change in the frequency of alleles um over in, in populations over um, periods of time so i would say that that itself is a kind of straw man and even at that, you know, it misrepresents the scientific position and it doesn't actually even, it, it, it doesn't even adequately explain the concepts of speciation and, you know, the difference between species and genera and family and others and all that. So I think overall, I've been able to show that it is much more reasonable to believe that there is no intelligent design than to believe that there is one. Oh, oh, so that's just going to be oh, oh, right now. All right, all right, all right. Uh, that that is for today, guys. You know, if you are listening to this and you are always stuck to the to the final to the uh to the end of the debate, please follow me on Twitter. You know, like follow me on Twitter, follow Jaden on Twitter, and be and be on Twitter. You can actually get a follow up from there. Have a great day, guys. You know, and enjoy your day and, and verify every single claim made in this video before you come to your own conclusion. And I uh, you know the truth is always the best. Enjoy your day, guys.